everyone, it's Amy and welcome back to my channel where today we have a travel tips video. Big shout out to Fit by Mo on Instagram for requesting this video. I hope it gets to you on time. I know you have a big flight coming up and you asked what do I pack in my hand luggage when I'm going on a long haul flight. Long haul flights are not pleasant experiences my friends, but with a little bit of preparation and forethought you can make them bearable. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to share all of the things that I pack in my hand luggage to make my long haul flights as comfortable as possible. If you guys love travel tips videos, I can definitely make more. Just let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and comment down below. But for now, let's get into my hand luggage. So the first hand luggage tip that I have that is not specific to just long haul flights, but to any flight slash travel experience that you are on, whether you're on a train, a plane, a bus, a boat, etc., is don't go out and get yourself some kind of fancy schmancy purpose-built hand luggage bag. Firstly, they can be quite pricey, and secondly, they're not that practical in the long run, because even though they have a million and one pockets and compartments and it seems ideal for when you're on the plane, what are you gonna do with that when you get to your destination. It's just a pointless thing that you've carried with you. So instead, I just take my regular handbag with me. So think about the handbag or backpack, I guess, if you are a backpack kind of person that you're going to get the most use out of once you get to your destination and use that as your hand luggage bag. So I just use my ordinary beat up everyday handbag, which I actually don't recommend this bag. I got it from Accessorize. I hate it just because there's a big pocket inside that's not secured to anything. So it kind of just flaps around and everything gets lost underneath, but that's neither here nor there. That's just a cautionary tale on really looking at the handbag that you're buying and making sure it's useful in some way. So that would be my first tip. Obviously make sure that you have enough space in it to fit all of the things that you wanna take, but it doesn't need to be some kind of like purpose-built travel bag. You don't need that. Now let's talk about the things that you actually want to put in the bag and number one is gonna be your passport. And I have to have my passport in a passport holder because number one, it is so much easier to feel in my bag and pick my passport out when it's in something larger like this. And I don't have that feeling like, oh my gosh, where's my passport? Every time I put my hand in my bag. And also something like this can hold your boarding pass, your travel itinerary. I have all of my uh, frequent flyer cards in here. I can put extra currency in here. I still have Kuwaiti Dina in here from where I lived in Kuwait, still. So this is ideal because you can keep all of your travel information and important documents in one place. And once you get to your destination, you can just throw this in the safe in your hotel or in the locker in your hostel. And you know that everything's in one place. So I highly recommend getting one of these. I never travel without mine. And now let's talk about things that are going to make that flight a little bit more bearable. The number one thing besides my passport that I cannot travel without is my earphones. If you're on a long haul flight, you're probably gonna get the in-flight entertainment unless you're on like some serious budget airline. And I always think it's much nicer to have my own earphones, not only because they're more comfortable, but also because it's so wasteful to use those disposable ones. And kind of along those same lines, some airlines get you to use these little adapter things when you're on the airplane. Can you see it? Yes, you can. It has a little hole in here that your earphones will plug into and then it plugs into the armrest of your seat. And I don't know, some airlines require you to use these so that the earphones work properly. Some airlines will charge you for them, others will just give them away for free. I always keep one in my hand luggage just in case I need it. Obviously, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your phone fully charged. Take a charger with you. Some airplanes now are so advanced that they have little USB chargers in the seat. If not, you can always take a battery pack. What did I just say? Did I say battery? Is that the word that just came out of my mouth? You can take a battery pack, you can plug it in. If you have a long haul flight, you might wanna play games on your phone. I am a big fan of downloading podcasts to listen to on long haul flights. 
So that's something you can do. If you have Spotify Premium, then you can listen to your music offline. So anything that you can think of that is going to give you some form of entertainment, whether it's watching a movie on the screen or using your phone with podcasts or music. The next big thing that I always have to take on the plane with me is snacks. Even if I'm flying with a super duper airline, <laughs> KLM, cough, they're my favorite. I just love them. But even if you're flying with an airline that just like plies you with food the entire time, it's nice to have something that you know that you're gonna enjoy and that you can snack on between meal times. I'm a huge fan of the little Grey's snack packs. They are so convenient to just throw into your hand luggage. They don't take up any space. I also highly recommend taking an empty water bottle on the plane with you. You will be surprised how quickly you can get dehydrated on a plane. And those tiny little cups that they give you with water, just it's not enough. So if you take an empty water bottle with you, you can ask the cabin crew to go ahead and fill it up for you. And that way you know you're getting enough to drink. If you're taking a night flight or if you're just super antisocial, then you can take earplugs and I also also recommend taking some fluffy socks. A lot of people get really frustrated with people who take their shoes off on the plane, but I am one of those people. I will not have my bare feet out and about in the plane, like in people's faces, throwing them around the place, but I just don't like to travel that long, that far, with my shoes on. So I take a pair of fluffy socks to keep my feet warm, to keep me comfortable, to make me feel a little bit cozier when I'm on, you know, what is essentially a giant tin can flying through space. And that just makes my flight a little bit more comfortable. Is it affecting anybody else? I don't think so. Next, depending on how long your flight is, you're going to want to take some toiletries. You're going to have to probably take mini versions of those since it's going in your hand luggage and there is a restriction on how much liquid you can take with you. I do not recommend going on any long haul flight without toothpaste, a toothbrush, deodorant. If you're wearing makeup, then maybe some makeup wipes to take that off and freshen up and some extra underwear for when you get to the other side. I've been caught out on a really long flight once where I didn't have spare underwear with me. I felt like the grossest person who's ever lived. It was not a good time. Add to that maybe a hair tie so you can scrape your hair back if you're feeling a little bit gross, some paracetamol in case you get a headache, I would say even maybe a little bit of a sleeping pill. If you're going on a really long haul flight, that's on you. You choose if you wanna self-medicate to yourself to sleep. No judgment from me. And definitely some hand wash because planes are gross. The last thing I feel like we really need to talk about when we're talking about long haul flights is what to wear. I am not one of those super glamorous people strutting it through the airport in like some fancy outfit that looks wonderful. That's why you never see pictures of me at the airport on my Instagram page, okay? I look like a troll, but I'm very comfortable because I stick to wearing my leggings, some comfortable shoes, I would take those off anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'll usually wear a baggy jumper because planes can be cold, although sometimes I'll put like a little vest top underneath in case I feel like I'm gonna get quite warm. And maybe this is an overshare, but I feel like the world needs to know the most comfortable bra that you can wear for traveling is the Victoria's Secret No Underwire Bra. I'm gonna leave a list of all of this on my blog, so don't worry if you're trying to like mentally take it all in at once. I'm gonna link that down below so you can go back and look at it in your own time. But seriously guys, this bra is a game changer. Not the sexiest underwear in the world, admittedly, but so comfortable for traveling. And if you're on a long haul flight, all you want to be is comfortable and well fed. So those are all of my tips for packing for a long haul flight. I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you guys got some new information or some ideas for when you're doing your own packing. I didn't want it to be anything too in depth or intense or too much to remember. But like I said, you can head over to my blog to check out the full list there so you can make sure that you have everything that you need. If you guys have any more ideas of long haul flight tips, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, then please go ahead and give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe, do the things, go over and check out my vlog channel because I'm always traveling somewhere over there. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so, so much and I will see you soon. Bye.